Here is a Sony model TAF110 amplifier. This is an entry-level model from 1989 that I picked up at the dump today. Comes complete with this thing, whatever that is. Looks like it was some sort of a tool to pull knobs off. So that might be handy. What you're about to see is me searching for a problem and it does take quite a while until I can finally find it. However, in the video the problem is obvious pretty much straight away. So let's play a little game. If you can spot the problem before me, write down the video time in the comments below. The screws for the top cover are missing. That's usually a sign that somebody already took a unit apart to fix it and then ended up not being successful. Now in this case, as we take a closer look, it seems like whoever has been in here before has not caused any damage. So that's good. The main fuse does seem to be intact. There is a lot of dust inside of here, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to blow this out. The trip to the air compressor was worthwhile. The unit does already look a lot better. I measured the main fuse and indeed it is fine. So I put that back in place. The unit is now plugged in, so let's apply power. Oh. Okay, now I'm not sure if you're able to hear it. Probably not. The power switch is arcing. That's not good. Anyway, I guess I'm going to take the risk. I'm going to turn it on and maybe it's going to result in some spectacular video. Here we go. Okay, I saw it lighting up briefly. Green LED. The main fuse... Wait a minute. Nope, the main fuse is still intact. I can smell something burning. Let's see... Uh-oh! What the hell? Oh, something... Something's been arcing right there. Okay, I think I'm starting to understand this. Seems the switch is perfectly fine. There is the power switch. It's mounted to this board right here, and I did unplug the unit right there, safety. Um, and this, now this board is soldered onto that board, and there is a bad solder joint which has just been arcing. Now if I move the switch, the power switch, if I push it, as you can see, the wire is moving. I cleaned off the carbon. Now, the joint doesn't really take solder anymore because it's so burned. So this is going to require a better repair. But for right now, I was able to kind of tack the wire back onto the trace. Unit is plugged in again, so let's try to power this up, see what happens. We got a green light and speaker relay clicked wherever it is. Right there, I think. Yep, there it is. Okay, maybe that was already it. However, this does once again show a very typical problem with Sony equipment of that age, amplifiers in particular from my experience, and that is bad solder joints. No matter what happens, no matter if this works or not, I will be taking this main circuit board out because another very common failure point are these uh, driver ICs, these integrated driver stages. Those develop bad solder joints and when they do, all sorts of terrible things happen in the amplifier. I measured the DC offset on the speaker terminals and it was just a couple of millivolts. So I now have a CD player hooked up and some speakers. Let's turn it on. Speaker relay clicks. Speakers A. 
I am on the CD input. We don't have any sound. I think there is a hiss of some sort or a hum. Let's see. Speakers A, CD input, source direct. Oh, we got a hum. That's not good. Okay, that's embarrassing. Turns out I had the RCA cable plugged into the amplifier, but I didn't have it plugged into the CD player, because I just put in a different one. So now... Yeah, we do have audio out of one channel. Now we got both channels. We still have that hum, I think. Okay, the one channel that's cutting out uh, seems just bad contacts, but there is still that, uh, that hum. And the very first guess turns out to be the right one. More bad solder joints right there in the center of the picture. Might not be able to see that if I wiggle. plug, or if I, uh, mess around with a circuit board, I can make the hum go away. So that's another easy fix. After repeatedly operating the switches and potentiometers, all the contact problems completely disappeared, so I think there is no need to bring out the contact cleaner. So. Really, the repair of this amplifier technically is quite simple, but it is going to take a lot of time. I'm going to take this unit completely apart, and I will check each and every circuit board, each and every solder joint, and I'm going to redo all the solder joints that look suspicious. That's going to take a while.